Hi, my fellow Algot Feder. Today, I'm very excited for you because of the third part of the machine learning for algorithmic trading. And within this video, we are going to try to solve two major points for machine learning model for algorithmic trading or for any type of trading bots. Uh, the two points that we're going to need to solve in this third part is, first of all, how to make the machine learning model as much efficient as possible. And the second part is how to find the best hyperparameters in order to get the AI to think by the right way and to enhance our profit. Because at the end of the day, it just for us, it's just how we can enhance our profit using AI and machine learning. Uh, along this video, that's going to be divided into two parts. In the first part, we are going to build the machine learning model, which means we are going to take a little bit of theory in order to talk about hyperparameters, why the hyperparameters are so much important, and why the hyperparameters are key for any type of AI when as soon as you want to go one step ahead in terms of artificial intelligence for algorithmic trading. Uh, the hyperparameters are something which are key and we are going to take a little bit of time in order to understand the mathematical intuition behind each one of the hyperparameters, apply it for our algorithm. Once we're going to be good with the um, machine, learning, machine learning algorithm, we are going to test and to check the performance of machine learning algorithm, which we are going to talk about uh, confusion matrix. Uh, we are going to take a look about the F-score, like what is the current score, what is the current accuracy of the machine learning model. You will see that the machine learning model will not be perfect, um, but if you want uh, speedness, but you will see at the end, like when we're going to make the back test, how this machine learning is, is working on real time and how we can apply it uh, for your future, uh, for your future bots. And what is the result of the back testing, which, are, which is going to be the third part of this video. Okay, guys, before to start, I want to remind you that for the first month, my online course on which you can learn how to detect profitable trading pattern, Ishimoku for crypto and other trading indicators such as the RSI. There is 85% discount exceptionally for the first month and there is only a few days left at this price. And just with the second case study, for instance, you can already target 80% return on the stock market. And, and maybe the most important announcement, I'm releasing a one-to-one -one membership program in algorithmic trading. I will build a team of three people. If you are highly motivated and want to learn fast, feel free to sign up below and you will get an email. The main requ requirement will be to be 100% committed and re ready to spend extra hours after work every week as I will build for you an intensive program to scale. So guys, enjoy the video. Okay guys, in this first part, we are going to deploy our machine learning algorithm. Essentially, what we are going to do within this section, we are going to create a machine learning algorithm. We are going to create it. After that, we are going to test it through a confusion metrics and F-score. And then at the end, we are going to back test and see how this machine learning algorithm is acting live. That's going to be one of the videos which is going to be the most complex, mathematically speaking, on which I'm going to go as much in depth as possible. Uh, I will do my best for the explanation to be as clear as possible. So if you have any issue, just put a break on the video, uh, shut up your phone and try to be focused as much as possible. So uh, this video is going to be divided into three points. We're going to start by creating our machine learning algorithm. After that, we are going to evaluate the performance of the model and once we're gonna have the performance we will see how this model is acting on the market which means we are going to backtest the model on a random day using a tesla share but like that's going to be used by different shares or even on the s p 500 so um, in order to build the machine learning model that's going to be divided into three different steps uh, the first step is going to choose, that's going to consist of choosing the right hyperparameters. And we are going to go in depth about what are the hyperparameters and how we can define and differentiate the hyperparameters. I think this part, uh, the theory behind the hyperparameters is going to be one of the most interesting and one of the most insightful. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you to follow this, um, this part of the video 
Once we're gonna choose the right hyperparameters to to use, what we are going to do, we are going to um, create based on the best hyperparameters, create an SVM model and run the SVM model on the training on the test dataset and see. And after that, like on the first step, gonna be done. We are going to check uh, how this uh, how this predictive model is acting on the um, in terms of performance, which means what is the accuracy of the model, uh, how many wrong trades did it made, uh, what is the loss, what is the gain. Uh, something that also can be added, I don't know if I'm going to have time here, but like maybe you can calculate the drawdown, but I think we can just take a look at the drawdown visually when we are going to do the backtest. So uh, let's start by talking about the machine learning model, but just before to talk about how we are going to build the machine learning model. Let's take a look about where did we stop last time and what we have done so far during the video one and two. Um, so we started by importing the libraries that we needed, uh, the pandas, numpy, plotly, yahoo finance for data visualization and importing market data, a talib in order to create our technical indicators and scikit in order for us to have all the tools that we need in order to build a machine learning model. Uh, after that, we started by importing the data for Tesla. Then we uh, plotted the Tesla values. We um, removed all the all the column all the rows where we had a volume of zero. Then we calculated different technical indicators such as the RSI, uh, the SMA, uh, calculate the cor um, correlation coefficient, the SAR and the ADX. After that, we uh, calculated the, we created new column, previous high, previous low, previous close, um, the OO and OC, which, which represents the difference between opening and opening and the previous closes. And then we create like all the different columns. And at the end, we, what, what we have done, we have, um, we have calculated our correlation coefficient uh, splits the dataset between a training and a uh, test dataset and define our, uh, define our output signals. Uh, if I have to make a, a draft about how, how or where we stopped last time, essentially at the beginning we had an initial dataset, which is like the market data, what we call the OHLC, open, high, low, close, plus volume, plus volume. Uh, that's the data that we download from uh, Yahoo Finance API. Yahoo Fin API, we got this data. Based on this data, we added like a bunch of technical indicators which are useful. Uh, technical indicators, tech uh, indicators. And uh, on top of these technical indicators, we added some um, previous close value in order to sense the volatility. And, um, and on this big data set, at the end, we split this data set between a training data set, which means like that is going to be the training data set on which we are going to train our machine learning model and that's going to be the test data set. The test data set on which we are going to uh, test our model and see if the model is accurate or not before to let the model run on the market. Um, yes, so we ended at the end of uh, the Jupyter look at the end of the last video. We ended on how we split it the, um, the data set and at, at the end we created um, we created a signal uh, before to close we created like a signal column up uh, we created the signal column just here okay let's put it in blue. Uh, and within this signal column, we defined like if uh, that's a good trade, which means if the market went uh, higher than usual, which means we gave a one. And if the market is stayed like exactly as usual, we put a zero and minus one if the market is lower than usual. So now that we have um, that we have that the signal column that we are going to use as an input within uh, within the machine learning algorithm. So now that we made like a quick recap of what we have seen last time, we can start by talking about how we are going to build our machine learning model. So uh, how, what you are going to need in order to build your machine learning model 
you're gonna need like to specify and to have in mind which type of strategy you want to implement. What we have seen in the previous video, we want during the video in the number one, we know that the algorithm that we want to use is the support vector machine. And the support vector machine have four different hyperparameters that you can use. Essentially, what is uh, what is an hyperparameter? Hyperparameter. Uh, an hyperparameter is just my definition if I try to simplify for people who don't have much experience with AI and machine learning. An hyperparameter is a design uh, on which is going to give uh, the indication to the AI on how to think. Um, essentially, that's the uh, hyperparameter is your way of thinking. If you are human, let's say there are some human who are like thinking more emotionally, some people who are more rational, some people who are in between, some people who think by this way, uh, depend of their cultural differences. And essentially for an AI, for an AI algorithm, the hyperparameters, that's going to be something slightly similar, uh, which means like we're gonna have like four different hyperparameters for the support vector machine. Uh, the first one is called C, the second one is called gamma. I'm going to go just after that like on what is the difference between all the hyperparameters. Uh, hyper the third one is kernel and the last one is epsilon. Um, I'm just going to remove epsilon right now because epsilon is much more used for SVR which means support vector regression. Um, I'm not going to go too much in depth now. So now what is the difference between C, gamma and kernel? Uh, the main difference between C, gamma and kernel, uh, the concept of C, how C, um, C hyperparameters is working. In order to, for C to define, uh, to define a good strategy, uh, C is going to give a penalty for each data point which is uh, misclassified. And for each one of these values, uh, you're gonna have like uh, you're gonna have to define um, you're gonna have to define a values. For instance, C is is a, is a value between one and uh, one million. Uh, for instance, gamma is at something between uh, 0 0.00001 and uh, one. I'm taking like a very extreme value, but like you see what I you see what I what I mean. And uh, for the kernel, you have like four different kernels. I'm going to be back with the, the four different kernels which existing just afterwards. So uh, going back to C, the difference between C gamma kernel uh, and kernel. What's the difference in terms of um, in terms of computation and calculation? Essentially, the C hyperparameters is going to work this way. For instance, let's say you have uh, your data. Oh, let's do that. Let's say you have your data on this axis. You have a different data point. Like let's say, let's take just two axes, but uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be uh, to be clear afterwards. Up, oh, but it just in order to understand the general concept. Up. Oh. Yes, perfect. Here you have two different classes. And how the C hyperparameters is going to work? Essentially, uh, the C hyperparameters. Let's say if you draw your hyperplane this way, the C hyperparameters is going to define the hyper hyperplane by giving uh, a penalty point for each one of the misclassified points. Which means like this point is going to give, get a penalty, this point a penalty, this point a penalty, and this point a penalty. And for instance, if you take a C of one million that's going to give to each point a strong penalty, which means uh, how, does that, how does the C gonna look if you take a C of 1 million? The C is going to create a border which is going to be this way. Up, something like that. Yes, that's going, to, let's say if you take a C of 1 million, because for each point misclassified, you are going to get a huge penalty, which means that C is going to, to um, create a border by this way. And by another side, if you take C, which is very low, uh, C is going just to draw an hyperplane this way, which means that you're gonna have a lot of misclassified points. But what is the danger of using a C, which is, uh, which is fitting your value by this way? Is, let's say, when you are going on with real data, let's say you have, you have, uh, you have a new data point, which is, uh, which is here, which is here and 
uh, another data point which is here. As you can see, these two data points are going to be misclassified. Why? Because C try to overfit the data just to be able to follow, uh, just to be able to follow the boundary. Uh, likewise, if you have like a data point which must be in this category and a data point is just right here or just right here, what you can see again, uh, C is going to misclassify. Why? Because C is going to overfit the market. Uh, because it's going to give high penalty for each data point which are misclassified. Um, by another side, if you are going to take uh, a boundary which is too much relaxed, which means like let's say you're taking, uh, taking something this way, uh, as you can see, that's going to be that's going to be too much relaxed, which means like uh, this point must belong to. Up. This point must belong to this category, and what C is going to do is going again because it's not enoughly fitting. That's going to misclassify at some point. That's why that's going to be important for us in order to create our algorithm to uh, in order to enhance our profits. That's going to be very very important for us to get uh, a function in order to get the optimum value of C. Okay. Here, that's how C is working. Uh, what I'm what I'm doing here, just like general knowledge for you to understand, um, to understand how the market, um, sorry, how the machine learning, uh, what is behind a machine learning algorithm. Because hyperparameters, I believe, is what is is almost what is the most crucial for um, for machine learning algorithm. And if you want to develop it for yourself at home, at least you understand the theory and the mathematical intuition behind. Uh, again, also what you have, um, I wrote an article. So I'm going to bring the link of the article just below, and you have like much more details about like the theory, of the difference between C, uh, gamma, and kernel. As you can see, it's what I explained just right here. The difference between a small C and a large C is underfitting and overfitting. Um, concerning gamma, how the gamma hyperparameters is working? Essentially, the ga gamma hyperparameters is going to work this way. Up, let me clear that. Up. Up, let me clear. Up, perfect. So, the gamma hyperparameters, let's again draw um, our data. Up. The gamma hyperparameters is going to work differently. Or, or let's go just on the article and see and directly take a look here. Essentially, how the ga gamma hyperparameters is working uh, by contrast to C, which is uh, going to draw an hyperplane in order to fit the market and give penalty for each point which is misclassified. And that's why large C, high penalty for misclassified point, which, which lead to overfitting. Low C, low penalty for misclassified point, which lead to underfitting. Uh, by another side, gamma is working on the distance between each data point. For instance, let's say you have um, you have two categories of data points this way, up. two categories of data points here in blue and here in red. Up. Yeah, okay, let's do it this way, up and here in red. Yes, you have two uh, clusters of data points. And how the gamma coefficient is going to work? The gamma of coefficients, the goal of the gamma of coefficients is to find the cluster based on the distance between points. Okay, if you have like a distance between points which is small, a gamma coefficient is going to create a cluster here and is going to create a cluster here. And for instance, if you have a gamma which is um, which is important, the gamma is going to overfit your data. For instance, here if you have like a very high gamma, you're gonna have like a model which is going to do this way. Up, if you have very high gamma, up, which means if you have like a new data point which is going to be here, which obviously belongs to this category, the gamma is going to misclassify this point. And uh, by another side, if you have like a very large gamma, what's going to happen? Up, what's going to happen? The gamma is going to just like draw a line this way. And this line, for instance, if you have this data point which is here which obviously belong to this category, the gamma is going to misclassify it. And for a trading perspective, if you have a trade which is far from your, uh, from your general data, it's going to give you a wrong decision for your trade. That's, most, uh, that's how the gamma, that's the difference between the gamma and the C. The C uh, 
uh, is working by making penalty of misclassified point while the gamma is working by on the distance between points. And the last one is um, the last one is the kernel. The kernel is like slightly different. Um, the kernel is going to compute the decision boundaries. It's something a little bit more elaborate. Um, it's something a little bit more elaborate. But the only thing that I want you to take over about the kernel is the fact that okay, let me okay, let me remove that. Yeah, the last point that I'm, the only takeaway that I want you to take about the kernel is um, is the fact that the kernel is working. Uh, oh, yes. yes, is the fact that you have four different kernels. It's how I want you to. To, um, to take away. Uh, the first one is uh, the first one is a linear kernel, which means that's going to draw a linear equation in order to uh, in order to to cluster the, the the data. The second one is the polynomial the polynomial kernel polynomial kernel, and the third one is the logistic or sigmoid kernel logistic Uh, sigmoid kernel, sigmoid. Up and the last one is the RBF, also called, also used for uh, RBF Gaussian kernel. Essentially, um, if I have to give the difference between all these kernel, this one that's going to draw an equation, uh, something like a x plus b. Uh, the second one is going to give you an equation, let's say uh, a x square plus bx plus c. Uh, that's going to be like I, at higher uh, at higher polynomial degree, but overall it's going to give an equation this way in order to differentiate and clusterize the data. And for instance, that's not something which can work for our case because we have uh, something like 13 variables and that's going to be something slightly not enough. The third one is going to give like a sigmoid equation, which means like an equation which is going to overfit uh, to overfit the data you can take a look at the first video or the first article uh, on which i'm talking about uh, sigmoid function and the last one is going to draw um, to draw boundaries based on the gaussian on the gaussian distribution um, essentially that's going to analyze the, that's going to follow like the behavior that's going to use the, the standard deviation in order to define the hyperplane when i'm talking about hyperplane i'm talking about decision boundaries um yes if you go back on the article like when i'm talking about the hyperplane is the green line here is what we call the decision boundaries the sole name of hyperplane okay so that's exactly how the that's exactly how the kernel is working and for our case we are going to use the rdf for our uh, for our machine learning model So, uh, going back to our plan on how we should, how we are going to to act, uh, how we are going to act in order to um, in order to um, to develop our machine learning algorithm. Let's uh, up. Let's remove that. Tac tac tac. Okay, linear up. Okay, let's go. Okay. So just let's first of all correct it and say we have going to use just three hyperparameters. Uh, yes, and uh, so um, how we are going to build our machine learning algorithm? Uh, the first, uh, the first challenge for us going to be for us to get uh, to get the optimum value. That's going that's going to be the first challenge. Is going how to get our optimum value for our for our hyperparameters, which means what's gonna what's going to be like the optimum value of C, um, optimum value of gamma. And you can also compare the different kernel, but uh, for the kernel I'm going to um, for the kernel I'm going to directly use RBF, but for instance you can just like add all the different kernel and the computer are gonna check what is the, be the best kernel. But I'm using RBF because the um, US market is following a uh, Gaussian distribution. That's why the RBF is going to be uh, to be the most efficient for our case. So the first question that um, that we are going to need to solve in order to build our AI model for algorithmic trading is how to get the optimal value 
for our hyperparameters. Once we're gonna get our optimum value, we're gonna need to create our SVM model. You're gonna see that just uh, that just a matter of step by step. But the most sending part gonna be for us to get this optimum value. And in order to do that, I'm going to, to go after that on how we're gonna do it. So a three step optimum value, create as SVM, and then at the end of the machine learning model, we are going to um, get a predict on the training set. Sorry, on the test set, my bad. Okay, so, um, and how we are going to get our optimum value? Um, I create like a map on the article, you can take a look. Uh, the first step is gonna consist of creating an iterative architecture in order to get the best parameters. Uh, what does that mean? What does that mean by creating an iterative architecture? Essentially, imagine you have, um, imagine you have like uh, the different hyperparameters, let's say you have value of C, uh, equal 10, equal 100, equal 1000, equal uh, 100,000, equal uh, 10,000, etc. Uh, how we are going to ask the computer to, uh, to work in order to get which value is the optimum? We are going to ask the computer to, uh, to go one by one, like step by step, take the first value, test, take the second value of C, test, and it's going to do that for C, for gamma, and here, uh, sorry, for C, for gamma, let me write it well here, up, for C, for gamma, and for the kernel. Uh, that's going to work like, so just for the kernel, we are going directly to use the RDF in order to gain time in terms of comp computation uh, and efficiency, but that's going to take, let's say, take the value uh, for C, which is equal 10, and a value of gamma of 0 0.1, a value of C of 10, value of gamma of 0 0.01. Um, after that, value of 100, a value of gamma. Here's the value of C and here's the value of gamma. So, and how we are going to proceed? We are going to proceed by iteration, which means uh, take value per value and, and let the, uh, the computer compute this way in order to get what is the optimal value and in order to fit our clusters and to make our, produc our prediction in a second time. So um, now that we got the plan, so first create an iterative architecture, then once we're gonna get this uh, iterative architecture, we are going to execute the model in the training set. That's going to find the best param bar parameters. And once it gets the best parameters, that's going to predict the market movement and see, and we're going to check what is going to be the impact uh, on the final prediction on the market. So now that we took a look about the model, about the theories that we are going to use, we can start by programming. And just one thing before to start, um, since last time, what we're going to, what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to make a little bit of cleaning, which means we are going to start by removing some variables that we are not going to need uh, for this explanation. Okay, so if we take a look at our data set, we are going to remove the column high, low, close, volume, and return in order for us to get, uh, because essentially we already have uh, the percentage of difference, which means we don't need to have all these values. They're just going to create more noise and too much data to the algorithm and the algorithm can get a little bit confused. Uh, it's just something that I'm doing because we have four different columns giving uh, kind of the same information. And when you have like too much column with the same information, the best is just to get just one column with the information. Because otherwise the algorithm is going to get confused and, and be too much based on that, uh, on these variables, instead of taking the RSI, the SMA, the correlation, the SAR. Because at the end of the day, that's just going to give like the same, the same type of value. If you use open or close, that's just going to give you the same. And we already have like a return column, which different return, return column, return one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, which means that we don't need to have like um, an extra an extra column. So um, in order to do that, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, store our data set within a variable that we are going to call x. The so x is going to represent the uh, the training data uh, like the, the data set. So and what we are going to do, we are going to ask uh, Python to drop the column 
Hop, the connect close. To remove the essentially what we are going to do, we are going to assign the value signals to a second variable that we are going to call y. That's why I'm re removing signals here, but essentially we are just going to get uh, the data set without the signals and the signals within uh, another variable. Uh, it's not like we are not clearly removing like the value signal, we're just like assigning signal to uh, to another variable, so the volume uh, and the return and say up axis equal one up let's execute okay perfect let's print x okay we have okay, our value we don't have the signals and so what we're going to do right here is just like to say a df signal signal up and Store it within the variable which is called e right. So now we have like the signal for all our values. That's cool. Okay, perfect. Uh, now we, ha we have stored like our uh, data sets uh, without the variable that we want to remove within um, within the variable which is called x, and we have our signal which is stored within the variable which is called y. Uh, if I'm doing that, just in order for us to get. Uh, something easier like instead of making data manipulation in a second time it's much better to do data manipulation at this moment so now we have like um, we divided our our um, our data set and what we are going to do we're gonna need to create um, if you remember about the plan we're gonna need to create an iterative architecture in order to get the best hyperparameters so um, in order to do so, what we are going to do, we're going to first of all uh, select some value that's just going to be our entry data. We are going to select some value for C, that's going to be 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000, okay? We are going to give some value for gamma, that's going to be up 1 E minus 2, up 1 e minus 1 and 1 e 0 okay okay that's going to be this value but essentially you can test as much as much value that you want but i'm using this value because i know that the um, optimum value is in between these two values because i'm doing that by experience and also you're going to need to have um, to have your algorithm to be as much efficient as possible so now we selected different value for C and gamma, but you can try as much value as you want. You can go to 1 million, 1 billion, 100 million. So that's going to be fine. Um, and for the kernel, um, either, okay, let's define it directly afterwards for the kernel. So now we started by defining C and uh, gamma. And what we're going to do, we're going to create like a new, um, a new class of parameters uh, that we are going to call up essentially uh, the parameters are going to work this way that's going to be svcc uh, like super vector um, computing c which co which is going to use the value of c the gamma the value of gamma and for the kernel we are just going to use rbf uh, as i explain you why we are going to use rbf it's because uh, because the market is following a normal distribution and for instance if you want to go uh, much in depth in order to see the proof that the market's following a normal distribution. Uh, you can go here. Wait. Um, let's go on my profile. Okay, perfect. COVID. Let's just COVID. Yes. Uh, let's research COVID. Yes. This article. Yes, and on this article you can see that um, I plotted like I plotted like the daily return of the market, and you can see that clearly it's not like hundred percent, like that's clearly showing that the market is following a normal distribution. If we're talking about the return, and if you remember in the second video what we have seen, we have seen that uh, how we define the signals, we define the signals based on the uh, on the return per minute, and the return per minute is also following this type of normal distribution. Uh, why it is following normal distribution? Uh, there is multiple reasons. 
and one of the main reason is because of the dark pools and if you want to know more about the dark pools you can go on the you can go on the online course and you're gonna have like much more information about uh, about the concept of uh, about the concept of dark pools you have one full video about the dark pool and you can and you're gonna be under, able to understand why uh, you're gonna be on, able to understand why um, why the market is following a uh, normal distribution uh, yeah if you want, i'm just going to show you which video uh, you're gonna need to take a look if you want to go through the dark pool okay i don't remember exactly which video was it but yeah uh yeah essentially like one of the reasons why the u.s market is following a normal distribution is because um is because of the dark pool and it's because the market is regulated by some algorithm in Wall Street in order to avoid like a major crisis and that's also why like for instance like the concept of dark pool how does that work essentially let's say you are selling for 100 million uh, dollars of stock of amazon uh, what the u.s market is going to, to do is going to show that uh, let's say 40 million have been sold and that's going to keep away 60 million until people are entering their position and they're going to sell uh, the other um, the, the other shares uh, afterwards in order to avoid a big crash or a big market manipulation that's the concept of the dark pool and that's why uh, that's a super super powerful algorithm which is directing uh, wall street and that's why yeah, that's why that's um, that's why that's important to um, to uh, that's why we are going to use RBF is because of the concept of dark pool that is behind. So uh, now uh, we specify our parameters. Uh, the next step uh, con will consist of um, now that we got uh, our different values that we want to test. Now we need to create like a step by step process in order to um, in order to um, in order to uh, to have like an iterative approach in order to test the different values of um, of c gamma c and gamma so how we are going to do that we are going to type step we are going to create a variable which is going to, to call to be called step essentially at the end uh, at the end of this process uh, we are going to to use um, to use um, to use the uh, the randomized search uh, cd function I can just give you like at the end how does the function is going to like looks like essentially we are going to use the randomized search CV uh, in order to um, to get the different random combination of the hyperparameters. Uh, that's what we are going to do at the end. And in and um, in terms of process, we are going to create a pipeline. We are going to use the parameters which are here, and uh, we are going to I'm going to talk afterwards about time series. So uh, the first thing is is what we're going to need to do just before it's going to create our pipeline and how our pipeline of data is going to be looking essentially that's just going to be equal to the different steps that we are going to specify here essentially the steps that we are going to use are going to be up uh, scalar up standard essentially like uh, I'm going. I'm not going to go too much in depth about um, about all the um, all the different parameters. Is a lot of uh, data um, of data architectures uh, for everyone who is like good in machine learning. Uh, that's like a step that you are get used to do. So up and specify that we are going to use the SVC up as SVC up and SVC function. Perfect. Okay. Uh, that's going to be the step, and we're going to use the function which is called pipeline. And within the function pipeline, we are going to specify that we are going to use the steps. Um, perfect. Now, uh, uh, what I've done, I just like kept uh, everything in um, in lowercase. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste within the random shares uh, cd function but uh, yeah just that's always good to have um, to have like everything in uh, in lower case so um here we have um we have um, we have our pipeline and now we created like a randomized search cv um 
And uh, alternatively, here I'm using random CR or randomized CR CV in order to um, in order to um, to uh, arrive at the score of different random combination for the of the of the hyper parameters. But you can um, essentially, and this score is gonna be uh, gonna be used to find the best parameters and create a new, newly optimized support vector classifier. But uh, alternatively, what you can do, you can use uh, a grid shares function here. For instance, you don't have to, it's not mandatory to use random shares, but you can also use a grid shares like based on what you prefer. So uh, let's execute this line of code. Okay, perfect. Now we got our FCV. And now that we got our FCV, what we're going to do, we're going to, to get, to try to get the best parameters. And we are going to use this RCV function. For instance, if you want the best parameters for uh, for SCV uh, SVCC, which means like here we have like these parameters which is SVCC, which correspond to this value. If you remember well, for instance, if you want the best parameters for SVCC, just like type FCV dot best params, which is a in-house function of scikit up and just like pass what you have here up and that's going to go within your uh, your class and select okay that's correspond to c up and here we're gonna have like uh, that's gonna correspond to the best c and what we're gonna do we're going to do that for uh, for each one of them to get like the best c the best gamma and the best canad so the canad is going to be just one value it's going to be straightforward but um we're gonna need to do that for uh, each one of um of the parameters that we are going to use. Up, we are going to do that for SBC gamma. Perfect. And here, SBC carnet. We are going to up best, uh, let's call it best gamma. And here, best carnet. Okay, perfect. And, um, and just before, uh, just before to do that, what we are going to do, we are going to do uh, we are going to call within the RVC, RCV function within the random share CV. We need to insert within it. We need to insert our data set and um, and our signals. Essentially, if you type um, if you type shift enter, you will see what you need. You need your your um, your data and your signals. That's why that's why we divided our data and signals at the beginning because you, you need your data and your signals before it, because like otherwise here like um, the algorithm gonna have no data and you need to bring the data within your algorithm so we are going to start by typing x dot i lock up split essentially what i'm doing right here it just um it just a matters of um it just a matters of uh, asking uh, asking to the algorithm to stop at the end of the training set hop and here for the signals we are going to ask to stop a split because if you go back to uh, what we did last time split correspond to the 295th uh, first rows that means that we are going to ask the algorithm to stop at this rows which means that 80% of the data set which correspond to our training data set and by doing that what we are going to do we are going to insert our data set within the uh, RCV which means that within the randomized short CV uh, function and uh, we are going to pass uh, the signal, which is the two type of data that the algorithm is going to need. And after that, what the algorithm is going to do is going to give uh, the algorithm is going to give uh, different values for all the different hyperparameters. So uh, let's execute. Up. Now we got um, we got our uh, our RCD, and um, and now and now what's happened? Now the algorithm is uh, optimize in order to get to select just the best value of C, gamma, and kernel. For instance, here, uh, let's say if you would have used, uh, let's say, a kernel of IBF, uh, a linear kernel, uh, uh, etc., etc., it would have select between all these kernels. But here, in order to gain time, because otherwise it's going to multiply the time. Uh, of computation by nine just by adding one parameters uh, mainly for the kernel because it's taking a little bit more time to run the kernel uh, if you compare to C or gamma that's why I'm just using RBF because also we want to be in day trading perspective 
So um, now we um, we um, we fit it within with it, like we get like uh, we get our randomized function which is ready. What we are going to do now, we are going to create our new support vector machine. We are going to create our new support vector machine and train the data. Uh, let's go back to our plan. If we didn't remove, yes. So now what we have done just right here, we create we created a function in order to create to get the optimum value, and now we are going to create the FZ, SVM um, SVM algorithm. So. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the next step. So now we are going to create the SVM algorithm. The support. Uh, we are going to create our support vector classifier. Uh, up, up. Type SVC. And what if you type shift enter, you can see what you need. You need the value of C of kernel of your gamma. Um, up. And for instance, you don't give any information that's going to be the value that they are going to use. Uh, yes, um, just here about the time series, like I use the time series value of two, but you can use whatever you want. I'm just using two in order to gain time in terms of calculation, because um, if you remember well, one of the key points is the calculation and computation time, because we are going to trade minute per minute, which means like the computation time and calculation time must be lower to one minute. You can get an even better algorithm, but the, computa the computation time is going to be higher than one minute, which is going to be, which gonna be um, it's not going to be um, efficient financially for us. So uh, we are going to type SVC equal, so C, we are going to give the value best C for C. Up. We are going to, for the kernel, we are going to give the value best kernel and for gamma, that's going to be equal to best gamma. Up. Now we created like our support vector classifier, SVC, and um, within this uh, support vector classifier, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to um, instantiate the standard, what we call the standard scalar. Um, essentially, like uh, as done uh, now, so now for instance, if you, let's say, let's do that, let's separate, uh, let's put some heading, um, create support vector classifier, okay, and now let's train it. So now what we have done, we have just like created the support vector classifier. Okay, up. That's why the work is less avoided. So uh, now we are going to train the data. Okay, and how we are going to train the data? Essentially, as done previously for finding the best hyperparameters, you will first scale the data before you fit in before you fit it to the classifier to train on. So to do it, to do this, we gonna need to instantiate the standard scalar function. Uh, that's just that's just a matter of architectures. Uh, SS one standard scalar function, or let's call it SS standard standard scalar. What we're going to do? We're just going to insert this uh, up value here. Up in order to have like this standard scalar function within a variable SS, and after that, what we're going to do, we are going to take this um, support vector classifier that I've, I call CLS like class and type fit. And within the support vector classifier, we are going to insert within it a standard scalar up dot, and within this standard scalar, we are going to Ask the standard scalar to transform. Up, we're going to take the same data set, then just right here, up to transform it and get the optimum value of C. Uh, okay, here for an argument of Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, standard fit transform. Mm -hmm. Okay, something probably missing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So now we got our value, which is for C one thousand and for gamma zero point zero one. As I told you before, like I knew like the 
optimum value of C is between 100 and 1000. So uh, now we got like our optimum value for C and gamma, and we are going to use this value for our algorithm. Now we got like what is the best value, and now the next step is going to be to predict the signals on the data set. If we go back on our plan, up, so first of all, create the, the SVM. Now we have done we have done that, we created the SVM and now we are going to predict the signals um, up before to go on, uh, on the performance and the backtest. So uh, let's do, let's predict signal. Okay, um, in order to predict the signal, we are going to create like a new variable that we are going to call y predict. Y, if you remember, is the signal value. Essentially, like uh, the signal value for our case for trading, uh, the signal value gonna correspond when you have like signal of minus one, which means like you have to sell the stock, and if you have like a signal of one, you have to buy the stock, and signal of zero is old. Uh, that's why like that's um, that's why like um, if you're, for a trading perspective, you have to. Uh, see like the bigger picture is that like and here like we are going to create like a y predict uh, column and that's going to be equal to that to the classifier dot predict and we are going to use the standard scalar dot transform but uh, this time like instead of using um, the instead of using the value until split we are going to use the test data set. Up, transform, up, transform, x dot iloc, but uh, within the iloc, that's going to be split until the end. Up, iloc, split until the end. Up, perfect. Okay, perfect. And now we are going at the end to type df. Red signal up. Okay, uh, that's going to be to be afterwards. Okay, up. Perfect. And for instance, now if you if you type uh, y predict, you can see what's inside. Uh, what are the prediction? Up here we have the prediction for all the different rows that we get. On our training data set and we're gonna see if that match if we are like matching with what have been what have been uh, done in uh, in the real life if the algorithm worked well or not um, what we are going to do we are going to uh, save the prediction essentially we are going to type uh, now that we predicted uh, our um, our last part of the data set uh, tac, 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 essentially, and for instance, we can compare like the last value must be one, one, zero, minus one. We can see if the algorithm predicted well. Okay, we can see that uh, this value has been predicted well, um, but the latest value have not like predicted well, uh, and the value just before one would have been predicted well. So uh, we are going to judge the the algorithm just afterwards. Uh, yeah, just before to do that, we're just gonna need to save the prediction. I'm just going to go a little bit quicker on that. Uh, essentially, I'm just going to copy and paste uh, to copy and paste my code. That's going to be uh, to be quicker. Uh, again, you can have like the Jupyter notebook. Just um, just write down below, and you can just like copy and paste it. So let's execute. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Now we just saved uh, our prediction within the column which is called Pred signal. And for instance, now if we print df, you can see you have like the prediction signals, and you can compare with like the prediction and what have been done in real time. We have created our uh, that we have created our SVM, uh, which means that we have created our predictive predictive model in order to predict the market, and we got uh, and we got our prediction. Uh, yeah. We got our prediction, let's write it here. What we are going to do now, we are going to analyze the performance of the model. How many threads did it write? How many threads did it wrong? And see, in terms of return at the end of the day, if we are better than the market. 
uh, that's gonna be going to be the last step, which is going to be the backtesting. So in terms of performance analysis, we are going to divide that into three steps. The first one is going to consist of calculating the return. Calculate the return. That's going to be very easy because we already have our signals minus one, which uh, zero and one, which means when we have zero, we don't have the stock. When we are one, we have the stock. And when we are minus one, we are uh, saying that the market is going to go down. Uh, once we're going to calculate our return, we're going to need to create our confusion matrix and to get our F score. Okay, and once we're going to analyze our performance, we're going to end this video by backtesting. So um, let's go back to our model. So the first thing that we're going to do now, we're going to start by calculating our return. Again, here we are going on a mode where we are going to short the market, which I um, strongly recommend, like which I strongly ask you to never short the market. Uh, it just, ethically speaking, that I prefer to add, just like ethically speaking in terms of face, I prefer to not, I don't want to, face, to short the market. But yeah, we are going to go on the, on the perspective that the trading robot is shorting the market. So uh, how we are going to calculate the return that we're going to get uh, from this uh, trading bot, we are going to get the return for the row, like return, and we are going to multiply by the uh, Y predict, which means by the predicted signal, predict. And for instance, let's say uh, if the return is uh, minus, uh, let's say minus 0.1%, if you if we had like predicted signal of minus one, which means that we are shorting the market, which means that's going to be plus zero point one percent. Yes, and let's say if we are like predicting predicting well, let's say the market took zero point two percent, and we are going to multiply by one. Let's say you had like a good trade, which means that you are going to do plus zero two percent. And let's say you had like a wrong prediction minus, which means like you are going to show a loss uh, on your PNL. So uh, how we are going to create this column return, this column return, we are going to call this column return one. It's going to be uh, equal to returns times Y predict. Okay, let's start by typing uh, DF return one equal DF return. Up return and that's going to be equal uh, sorry, times df pred signal up df oh, yeah, messing up up it's exactly that and let's print the df afterwards okay okay here we have like on our on our prediction set. For instance, here we predicted the short that the market lost uh, 0 0.0586. That has been a good trade. Here we have not done anything. Okay, we have like okay, we have our total. Okay, up here we bought the market. The market went up, which was a good trade. Here the market went up. We bought, and here we didn't did anything, and the market went. Uh, uh, I don't know why the column return. Yeah. No idea, but uh, it's like in the middle. But yeah, what I want to show you is like how does, um, does the return one column is working. So now we got like a, our return minute per minute. And what we are going to do uh, before to back test it and to see um, the difference between. Uh, okay, also, otherwise, okay, let's start by the let's start by the by the back testing. What we can do right here. We are going to backtest it on Plotly. Oh, let's just like quickly backtest it before to analyze the performance. So um, let's type backtest. Okay, let's just remove that. Oh, no need to show it. Okay, let's type, let's write backtest. Let's give a heading. Oh. Okay, up. Oh. And for the backtest, what we are going to do, we are going to type fig equal go dot figure 
up and type fig dot add trace go dot scatter okay let me just copy and paste my up yes uh, yeah at the end what you're gonna do we're just going to ask plotty to show up uh, if you want more details about plotly again you can just go uh, on the online course you have um, you have the plotly selection where you can just go you have like all the details step by step in order for you to become uh, to become fluent uh, on plotly okay uh, let's go back to our model perfect okay now we got that and we are just going to add like essentially like what we are plotting we are plotting the return and the uh, predicted re predict predicted uh, returns in order to compare uh, these two value like to see if like the the normal returns is um, above the the return okay uh, yes as you can see here we have like our strategy return and here we have our stock return while the market uh, lost uh, lost uh, how much here like while well, the market lost a little bit more like uh, almost one percent uh, almost zero almost one percent here we took three percent uh, yeah I see what I have done I just used the column uh, return uh, from split until the end which means like yeah uh, just in terms of timing as you can see it's not it's not the right time you just have to to keep okay let's do Just to check. Okay. <laughs> Taking the index. Up. Okay, yes. Now we have the right time. Okay, so uh, now that's how the support vector machine worked. Uh, essentially whilst uh, while the market uh, while the market went down, as you can see the the predict the predictions went quite right. Uh, the only moment when the when we took a wrong prediction that has been at this moment and wow okay uh, it's not working as much well uh, all the time like um, like right now we took a lot of good decision um, usually like you can increase by 20% but here like you just like uh, during this day like the algorithm works super well um, yes on average like yeah uh, you can increase your winning rates like by at least 20% uh, yes, but as you can see here, like how the market predicted, like here, like that's been like he, he, he didn't have any stock, he bought, didn't have any bought. Uh, sorry, uh, he bought or he shorted the market. Here, he, uh, here the his algorithm clearly shorted the market. Um, yes, just here at the end where he bought sometimes. Okay, cool. That's very interesting. Okay, now we just like back tested, uh, back tested our. Um, our values essentially we just like up and and use like the cumulative uh, cumulative value of the return which means like we took all the return per minute and 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 uh, calculate the cumulative uh, cumulative values um, okay and now what we can do just in order to close this video is like to analyze the performance of uh, to analyze the performance of the algorithm um, what to do in order to analyze the performance we are going to do we are going to start by calculating our confusion matrix uh, up, what we're going to do we're going to type cm equal confusion matrix confusion matrix up and between parentheses y split to the end up and compare it with y predict okay up and print our confusion matrix okay cool so now we have like more information about our confusion matrix um okay it's interesting well okay like the algorithm has been very very accurate uh, as you can see up Okay, let's do something. Let's uh, let's print our confusion matrix. Uh, the only thing, just like you're gonna need um, matplotlib for that. Uh, up. Uh, yeah, essentially, like 
as you know, I prefer to use Plotly because you have like much more information than me as an algorithmic trader. But what we are going to do here, we are going to use Matplotlib just to print the confusion matrix because um, the way of printing it is like much better. Uh, you can have like the code in the video below. Uh, so in the link below, you can just like copy and paste the code. You not gonna need to write it all. So perfect. Here we got like our confusion matrix. Uh, yes, as you can see here, we we had like um, we had uh, 18 out of 25 uh, right uh, right time when like we needed to so to sell and it sold the it sold the stock. Uh, we needed to buy and it bought the stock. That has been right 21 times. And we needed to be uh, in between, and that has been right. But what is even more interesting, and what you have to see when you are on confusion matrix, is these two extrema, which means like this one, one and zero. Uh, this one represents like one time when the market uh, needed to go to go up, and um, essentially like okay, let's go on the seed board. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so this like on the confusion matrix. Up, 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 yes. Essentially, this diagonal is uh, when we did the right prediction. Here we had like minus one, and here minus one, which means like minus, sorry. Here minus one, which means like, okay, right prediction. Here zero, here zero. Okay, we got the right prediction. And here one, and here one, here the right prediction. And what is the worst case scenario? It's like if the market went up and we got an order to sell, which means this case is the worst case. And here, conversely, if the market went down and the market asked to buy the market, which means that the other, um, that the other case of scenario on which we, we want to avoid. So, um, so, and what is interesting here, is, as you can see here, we just had like one case on which the algorithm have been totally, totally, totally wrong, which is very reassuring because what does that mean? That means that um, over um, over something like, uh, let's count, um, 25, 25, um, 18, 21, uh, 26, uh, 46, 46, 46, uh, plus 7, uh, 46, plus 7, sorry, 46, 47, 67, 67 plus 7, 74. Uh, out of 74 trades, uh, the algorithm has been totally, totally, totally wrong just one time. It just to show you uh, the power of um, of AI in order to predict the market. Uh, most of the time, the market have been predicting right, and even sometimes if that have not predicted right, that have not been um, huge, 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 huge. Um, like huge consequences, as you can see, like, let's say, okay, the market went up and you didn't bought, that's not something that's not a huge loss. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but overall, like, as you can see, like the, the, the accuracy of the market looks quite strong. And what you can, what we can do, like in order to get all the information about, uh, about the accuracy is to print the classification report. Uh, what we are going to type is just like CR classification report and execute. Boom. Okay. Now we have like the precision of our um, of our algorithm. As you can see, we have like um, a weighted average of sixty seven percent in terms of precision, which is um, which is um, which rep rep represent like a very very strong um, very strong algorithm. Essentially, like the precision is the is the ratio between um, between the true the true positive true positive up here the true positive uh, divided by the tr true positive plus the false positive which means here that means be like 18 uh, divided by uh, 18 plus plus 4 which means like 18 divided by 22 uh, that's how we're calculating the precision uh, the recall is the true positive divided by the true positive plus the numbers of false negative not false positive sorry here it was false false positive here is divided by the number of false negative, and here the F1, uh, the F beta score, the F1 score can be interpreted as like an harmonic, uh, an harmonic mean between the precision and the recall. Um, 
and um, and the and the support is like the number of occurrence that you got. Okay, now that we have back tested and analyzed the performance of our prediction and our predictive model, the next step will consist of developing this algorithm into a live trading. Essentially, how does that work? Like, if I have to make you a very simple process, you get your data, you build, you train your data up training. Uh, you build your predictive model, predictive model built, you backtest, uh, backtest plus performance. And if the backtest plus performance is right, what's going to happen? You're going to need to go on live trading, which means like now, the next step after that is to let the trading robot trade live. H however, as you may be aware, like uh, the code, how it is at the moment is not usable for live trading. Essentially, like the type of code that we have, it's what we call a uh, Python script in Python script, script in, um, in vectorized, vectorized format. And what we we'll need if we want to go on live trading is not to get like this vectorized format, but to have like a code which is going to be event driven format which means like we need to, con to um, convert this vectorized format of the algorithm which means like now we have like all the condition of the algorithm all the different step all the different uh, section and in the next video we are going to convert it into an event driven format which means like we are going to convert this algorithm from um, from what we call a vectorized format which means like uh, something which is divided step by step and uh, on which you configure all the hypotheses to something which is going to be turned like when I say event driven format we will need to specify uh, the data that we the data that we want to to take the interval we want uh, to specify the buy and sell uh, within the algorithm and to link this algorithm to the broker. Uh, just let me know in the comment which broker are you using because that's something which interests me uh, and like that in the next video when I'm going to develop it into an event driven format I will do the best to link it to the broker on which uh, most people put a like I'm going to put like some broker name uh, just below in the comment section you can just like put give a like but the best for me just to know um, what is the broker that you are using at the moment and with which broker do you want me to uh, connect this uh, day trading robot? Uh, I have my broker, but like if you have like another one, I can um, I can I can um, I can see like what is what is the most used broker within the people who are following this video, and I'm going to develop this event driven format of this uh, of this coding robots. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, before to, to stop, uh, for anyone who want to go much further and to scale much, 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 much further in terms of algorithmic trading and do that much quicker than just taking an online course, I'm going to build a team of three people. Uh, that's not going to be for anyone, again, this type of, of uh, coaching. That's just going to be for people who are very highly motivated. Uh, about the period, I think that's going to be over three months, but still have to decide but I believe that we the goal gonna be for um, the people in the team uh, the team of three people that we are going to build to be ready to um, for January to be ready and to have all the skills that they need in terms of algorithmic trading okay guys and if you have like any question just uh, feel free to let me know um, yes I think I believe um, also like you can just go and take a look on medium about uh, about the article uh, tag stories uh, above the article you're gonna have like much 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 more information um, and also like I'm talking about uh, yes also if you want to yeah I'm talking about like the next step what you need essentially like yeah what what I was telling you like you need to have like an event driven approach uh, which will consist of pitch fetching real-time data as an input and generating the trading signals and placing orders to brokers. 
Um, yes, again, just like precise in the comment, what is for you from your vision? What is the best broker? Like which broker do you want me to use in order to connect this, uh, this robot? Um, yes. So guys, and again, I'm going to put the link for the article just right down below. Just click and you will have like a, a link to it. Okay, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have like any question, you can join the Discord group. Ask me. I will be very, very happy to, to, to chat with you. See you.